All right, listen up, spuds. This is Zap Brannigan, eh? master of time, space, and everything else in between. And, uh, oh, yeah, winner of this year's Modesty Award. Yeah. You're listening to You Suck with Al and Tom. Your one stop for this sort of thing. Yeah. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to You Suck. I'm Alex Whiteley. And I am Tom Bruno. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I'm How are you? I'm good. Fucking, it's been so long since we've talked. Bro. I was going to say the same joke because I'm just as much of a dad as you are. It's probably a dad joke. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We did yeah, just yeah. do a podcast. Um, and I really, I really enjoyed it. Ken was amazing. Yeah. We spoke to Ken Furry, which is... Um, you know, I, I I find this is the best thing about what we do, right? Because you have your heroes and your your idols, and I have my idols, and my heroes, and we find each other these these things all along the way. And mm. we, I, find, I feel like I'm finding more people to look up to because fuck of this, yes, yeah? fuck yes, I completely agree. And I think the cool thing is because I have my heroes, you have your heroes. It kind of like gives each other a taste of somebody new, somebody maybe you wouldn't look into, maybe somebody I wouldn't look into, like. You're a big fan of um, what was that show? Fuck, I'm the I'm the only asshole that doesn't watch that show. The the soccer show, football Ted show. Lasso. Ted Lasso. Um, you're a huge Ted Lasso fan, monster Ted Lasso fan. You've brought in people from Ted Lasso onto the show. Yes. And yes. Um, in doing so, I enjoyed the conversation and found out so much about these people that it made me really intrigued to what the show was. Now, it's you're not, not as much a, it, though. Fucking no, no, not at all. Not at all. Um, but like not being a horror guy, what was your take on, on our last chat? Would you, what I got, would what you... I got from it is there was a there's a huge appreciation for the art itself, you know, the, the, the people that they work with, the people the, I feel like there's so much more we could have spoken to Ken about. I feel like we could have learned about, I wanted to go down the eye, the, the, the eye uh, avenue of um, looking up to mentors on set to becoming mm. a mentor on the set. Cause you know, he's yes. worked for, so, for that long. He'd have gone through that transition. So I feel like uh, Ken, if you're going to listen to, if you're now a Yusuk fan <laughs> and you're going to go back and listen, well, I'd love to get you on and talk to you about that. Cause it's just a, an amazing thing. And this is, this is, a, this is the, what we, we've got to consider is that, you know, horror is its own thing comedy is its own thing you know they have it and uh i felt like it's good that we got to talk about Shaun of the dead because i feel like they they did the unique thing where you can sort of branch from one to the other because not every um movie fusion attempt is good not at all not at all i mean if you think about like uh they released scary movie right and it was like the not the first by a stretch of imagination, but it was like a delve into horror comedy oh, where they, the you know, are, yes, distinctly uh, trolling a certain movie set. And then you think about uh, not another teen movie. Now, similar premises, not the same fucking thing and not nearly as good as one another. I would yeah. say that scary movie is a far superior film to not another teen movie. Would you agree? Disagree? Uh, I feel like they, they, they deserve their own separate place because, I, with not another team movie was a great i it, because it was a it was um a comedy about comedies about comedy yeah. you know what i mean like well, it was yeah yeah i mean well romance movies i mean you're not wrong i'm not saying you look you're wrong no you're right um but because they both did that attempt to parody you know very known franchises i i just feel like you know w- one did it far better so in the case of Shaun the dead where they, you know, didn't rip off zombie franchise. You can't rip off something that big, but they did definitely really show a lot of love and admiration and respect for the movies that uh, came before, like Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead. Yes, yes. And they and they did it masterfully. So hearing somebody like Ken, who was involved with the original masterpiece, say that, no, I really appreciate. It. And he almost got down on you when he thought you were downing fucking Sean dead for the first like ten seconds. He's like, wait, what don't you fucking dead? dead? Don't you fucking? Dead? I love that film. I love it. I will oh, great movie. My veins. I love it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like. I love movie. I really do. I, and it, I've different genre, love movie? genres. I love movies. You love- you lo- I, think like, I love I love movie. It's like, I love movie. Why? Yeah, I did say that. I, did say that. <laughs> I, I love all the movies. Let's go with it. Um, <laughs> did you go and watch Book of Boba Fett? 
Mm-hmm. No, um, sorry. It, it's not that I don't want to. Trust me. As soon as I'm done with this, that is what I'm doing. The thing is, like, we were trapped in our driveway. I'll take a picture of it. There's so much snow that got moved around. My, my neighbor's got a, a big old tractor. So we had a plow guy come. He took one look at our driveway. He's like, have you been driving over the snow this whole time? I'm like, yeah, man, it hasn't been that bad. And we got a big ass vehicle with enough clearance. It's really heavy. So we could just right through it. Um, but because we did that, we left a lot of like impacted snow, which his truck would have just kind of like dug into and gotten stuck probably is at least what he said. So he left, we were fucked. Shona barely got back in when she came back from work and we're just kind of sitting there going like, what are we going to do? Fortunately, my next door neighbor is a lovely, lovely guy named Eric. And uh, actually his daughter's doing, um, what she doing? She's working with uh, wildlife preservation. So I was like, oh shit, funnily enough, if uh, you ever want me to contact some of the cool people we've talked to, maybe we can get them at least in communications because they're, you know, the good people. So he brought his sweet ass fucking tractor and seriously moved so much fucking snow. When you see how much snow he moved, you'd be like, dude, what the fuck? Did you blow him afterwards? Which I should have done. So that's nice. what I did instead. Yeah, you live in a completely different world to me. Absolutely, mm. like because yeah. we have all the snow. Because like the problems I face. What, what do you mean by that? Because of the snow, I feel. I mean, like we do get snow here. Um, we don't, don't always get it. I mean, like uh, I'd say I've like five years. We might get snow out of four, you know. Um, but we don't get it as bad as you guys. You know, we don't have to live with it for like four or five months. Do you know what I mean? Because mm. you're like. Right, let's do this. We're on the Canadian border. We've got to almost be Canadian, you know? Well, it, it's really funny to think about that because everyone thinks of a white Christmas because of one guy, Charles Dickens. And if I'm not mistaken, Charles Dickens is English, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he writes about the white Christmas, which becomes the, you know, the constant for what people want, except if you live in a tropical place. If you live anywhere where there's any snow accumulation, everybody's like, oh, I really... Like, do you, you, do you want a white Christmas? Is that something you look forward to? Or do you not really care at this point? Fucking hell. YouTube, sorry. Um, I am not a big fan of snow because of what it does to um, to us Brits because it's super embarrassing. We're like, right, everything's closed. <laughs> everything's closed because it snowed, everybody, you know. Um, and it's one of the Facebook thing as well. It's snowing. It's snowing, and in fact, when it snowed this year, because it did snow like really heavily for like, an hour, <laughs> I was like, "I've done it for your Facebook. Don't worry about it." And I realized I was kind of trolling myself whilst trolling others. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean. You're was... you're incepting the snowfall inside of yourself. It was a, a thought inside of a thought. Now, do you have like sn- do you have all season ties- tires? You know what I'm talking about when I say the word all season tires. We Is don't need thing? to buy specific. I mean, I know people that do. All right, mm-hmm. I know you're out there. Yes, me, in fact. People that go out and change your tires, get snow tires and mm-hmm. shit. Um, I mean, well, if, no, no, seriously, if you need you need to, Tom, because that's the way you yes. live. But I know there's people in the UK that do it too. Really? Because Wait, Shane, petty does... motherfucker. I'm joking. If you do that, that's fine. But um, I don't, and not, not a lot of people do. Um, it, I mean, the problem with it is like a lot of people forget they have their snow tires on. So all of a sudden, like, it, like snow tires are great. There's little metal studs in them. They help you keep traction in the snow. They really keep you on the road. But the thing is like, it's so, it, it changes so drastically. One day you're going to have like a ton of snow. The next day the roads are clear and you're still driving on these studded tires. So they wear down really quickly and, and very, um, effectively lose their fucking, you know, track full this um so question for you i didn't think you could drink beer on keto it's light beer so if you look on the back here um it says here bah, 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 bah. by the way anyone that doesn't know uh alex is making his second attempt at keto i know it's probably my fourth or fifth i'll do it i know this is i will lose a shitload of weight off keto mm. um I'll, you know i'll lose like Oh, three stone or something and then i'll fuck up and then i'll put it back on and lose it again put it back it's one of those things that it's not like a real hard thing to do anymore i just switch to it to lose a bit of weight and to make myself look feel a bit better and then have a couple of months off and then put the weight back on it's not hell not good for me not at all well i i don't think there's anything wrong with it because all you're effectively doing is cutting out a lot of sugar and carbs out of your diet for months at a time there's nothing really wrong with that per se it's just I feel like you get down on yourself because you do really well. You lose the weight. 
And then there's no because you're such a busy guy, like anyone that knows anything about Alex, they know that a couple things. One, you're British. Two, you're really mm-hmm. fucking busy. So busy. Um, you just really had a family member move into your house, which obviously trying to is that person following the program, they eating what they want. Does that make you jealous? Uh my brother is doing what the what he likes, and that, that's fine. Good. Because he, he's not he's not he's not here to be like Make sure you brush your teeth. Make sure you're in bed by a certain time. All this sort of stuff. He's older than me, man. Do you know what I mean? So he's easier to. Is he? Yeah. That was actually that was actually my next question. That was my follow up. Was who was older, you or your brother? Uh, yeah, he's old. He's eighteen months older than me. So yeah, he's he's older than me. It's, cool. uh, it's, 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 it's um it's an interesting transition from him. He's gone from Ireland, where it, you know Bantry, where he's from, is is beautiful place, but it's not a lot of work, right? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, and he's he's very well qualified in, in in care work, and um, COVID has absolutely obliterated the care workers' staff force mm. here in the UK. Um, so uh, he's walked here, and he's like, "There's jobs everywhere." He's literally been inundated with emails. So if you if you're looking to uh, to sort of emigrate to somewhere. But there's work. <laughs> there's lots of care work here in Shrewsbury. Just saying. Just saying. Excellent. You know. Excellent. Um, I'll have to take a picture of. Um, I, I've showed you Lake Willoughby. It's my favorite lake I've ever been to in Vermont. It's this amazing glacial lake that's super old, super cold. You can't really like enjoy swimming in it as an adult until you, like July. Um, don't worry. Like we go in June when it gets warm enough, but the water is fucking freezing. Mm. Um, but I've showed you pictures. It looks like it's from a different country. Like there's mountains like all around the side. It's just it's a case Switzerland out. in the summer. Yeah, man. So I'll have to like uh, grab a picture and be like, say, uh, you know, brother of of Alex, what do you think of this? I'm like, dang. It's great. Yeah, great. It's, it's he throws a couple thumbs up. I'm like, now you're just patronizing me. I, I'm 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 missing going. I'm missing traveling. I really am because you, you yeah. When we first met, I'd go away and I'd be mm-hmm. went to Colombia when we first met. Did we? Did I? Um, you went before I met you. You went to Colombia, but you're kind of talking about it. you're still reveling in the memory of going to Colombia. Oh, I've been a couple of times, but I, I we like we like to go to places, and we're going to Greece in in May. Oh. Oh, you're going somewhere. Oh, good. This is uh, probably a good time to talk about then. I'm going somewhere in May too. So we might be looking. It's a good thing we banked a few episodes then, huh? Mm, yeah. Well, this by the end of tomorrow night, we'll about we'll be three weeks ahead. Excellent. Well, we'll mm. keep on the uh, we'll keep doing and keep well, doing the episodes and bank them up. So then maybe we can both take off uh, some vacation time because I'm going to Florida. Ah, you're gonna go see Andy. Mm. <laughs> If Andy travels, like we're going uh, four hours south of where he lives, so like the 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 idea of flying all day, getting down to where we're going, we we already kind of made a plan. I want to see the Keys, the Florida Keys. It's the only part of Florida I've never been to. I've been to the Orange Coast. I've been to where I'm going now. I've been up where Andy is. I've been to Orlando, so I've seen a ton of it, but never the Keys. And I hear it's fucking amazing. Hmm. It's it's like you know, it's the closest you can get to like going to a tropical paradise without leaving the United States or going to Hawaii. Interesting. Interesting. When um, you, I mean, when I've you go to, heard, no, 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 you go first. No, 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 you first. Then I'll go. I, I've just got off a phone call with, with Moose. We're making some plans, some ideas, mm. just, just like things that we can do. And one of the things we, we thought of doing is like, it's some of the stuff we started doing when we first started you suck, you know, let's do things over here and you do stuff over there and let's compare, you know? And one of them was like, um, make a silly video of us going to the seaside, you know, let's go to the seaside. And then we go to real, which is this busted up, like play. And we're like, yay. We take our sun castles and we go make sun castles on the beach and stuff, you know? And then there's you, you need sunglasses on the follow from the Florida keys. Like, yeah, baby. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. That's how I live, baby. That's like, I don't know. I, I've never been to your coast. You, you show me pictures and it looks amazing. But like if it's not like dead summer, I, I, I can't go to the coast. It's way too fucking cold. We went uh, we went to Hampton Beach one year, which is in New Hampshire around where Donnie lives. It, it's like the only place out near us where you can get to the ocean because we're so fucking landlocked. But is it really it cold, has, though? But it's really cold. I mean, it's the Atlantic, so it's it's going to be a lot colder than like the Gulf or the Pacific along those lines. But like midsummer, dude. You never can tell. Like, if you think about all those people that go to the Jersey Shore, they don't go because it's cold. They go because it's nice, right? Mm, yeah, I suppose. Uh, um, fuck, um, you're 
you're a well-traveled motherfucker. Like you've, you've been doing it. Like what, what I say, I'm a decently traveled dude. I've been to a like, couple different countries. I've been to a lot of States, all that type of jazz, but you on the other hand, you are actually a well-traveled uh, person. How many no, countries say- have you been to now and continents? There, there are people out there that have traveled an awful lot more, more, more oh, than yeah. me. I mean, I've, I've, um, I've been to Hawaii. Um, I've been to Venice. I've been to Egypt. Wow. <sighs> Gosh, where else have I been? You go Belgium. Greece, went to Belgium. Belgium. We went to, I wanted to go to Bruges uh, because of the movie. Um, I mean, we went, up, we went up the Belfry Tower as well. We did all that sort oh, of really? stuff. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. How how hard is it when you go to, like, Germany to be like, wait, Belgium's not in Germany. Never mind. I was about to say, how hard is it not to be like, hey, Nazis, right? That was fucked. Well, I mean, not, the Nazis sort of flattened Belgium. <laughs> it just literally yeah. rolled over. It blitzkrieg, gone. Um, where else have <sighs> I been? I've been to... Um, I've done uh, loads of the of the of all but one of the uh, the Canary Islands. So that's uh, Tenerife, Lanzarote, and Gran Canaria. I think it's Fiorentina. I've got to do. I've been to Morocco. Um, went to Marrakesh, didn't we? That was quite cool. Remember now, that? when you go to Colombia, because you've been there a couple of times, do you? There I mean, I forgot, forgot Colombia as well. I didn't even say that. Yeah. Now, obviously, you got Kaz with you and Kaz's family, so that's like kind of a way to integrate and be part of like you know the the environment. But do you ever feel like a fish out of water when you go there? Do you feel like, man, I'm a fucking British bloke and I'm just you know hanging uh, out in the no? It's I feel Paris. like I'm a, when we're in social convert. It's weird, right? Because usually, um, usually I am I'm a bit timid when it comes to like large groups of people, right? But when it comes to like me actually trying to learn about something or, you know, trying to fit in. I, I can, I can be the soul of the party and sort of chameleon myself into sort of fitting in. We went to this, uh, this amazing bar in, 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 um, in Bogota called San Sebastian. And there's this um, Einstein looking motherfucker who owns the joint and he's obsessed with the Beatles, right? There's Beatles, Beatles merch everywhere. Um, so the guys that we're with, uh, so there's my, my, my wife, uh, there's uh, Jimena, who's been on the show before, amazing, mm-hmm. girl, um, and uh, uh, members of the family. And he found out I was English. And he's going, oh, you're English. You're English. He's like, he's not Chinese, but, or anything, but he's, that's, he was going, oh, you're that's English. And he's like, oh, you need you need to come on stage. You need to sing with me. Oh, my God, man, this is going to be amazing. We're going to sing a song together. Let's sing the Beatles. We never did, but he was just like really friendly. And I, I, by the end of the night, I was, we were dancing with the locals. Doing, it was just amazing. Like I got out there and I got to, taste the, the nightlife and stuff which was really really good yeah. um speaking of dancing a whole bunch like we didn't really grill our last guest just because it was, you know we could tell that it was nothing you really want to talk about how much cocaine do you think was at that fucking richard Pryor party oh i think it was like everywhere i mean it's <laughs> I don't know how to put this, but I, I, th- I think if, if, if you know um, that scene in Ace Ventura when he goes to dust the 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 uh, the, yes. the hut with the the, the bat cave cage, yeah. uh, that's what it would look like. I imagine. Um, um, I, I remember uh, Blow with Johnny Depp and the, how they had like that big last shindig before shit goes uh, tits up. I think it's something like that, just like huge silver balls I, of fucking cocaine. I can't cocaine. feel m- my my face. I can't feel my face. God, how great was that fucking movie? That like I, I I haven't thought about that movie in a long time because I mean like it, it's no secret I, I enjoy certain things ever so often. I'm an adult and I you know, don't. I don't. I get no, my own no, no, no. just uh, depression alone. It's fine. <laughs> Today's right. a good day <laughs> to die. Um, no, you you don't have to. That's what makes the dynamic so cool. Because like I can go and do things for you, come back and report to you, and you'd be like, "So how was that?" I'm like, "Well, I wasted a lot of money, and I feel kind of dumb." You're like, "Yeah, that sounds about right." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but like when I really stopped partying a whole bunch, I stopped doing certain things, and one of the things was like I, I wouldn't watch Blow anymore. I wouldn't watch Scarface because. All it does is it doesn't make me like itch, be like, oh my god, I need to fucking go do cocaine or something. But it definitely makes me go like, oh, cocaine is fun. So you know, that's you, that's a you know me. I bounce between the vape and the cigarettes an awful lot. But one thing that can definitely make me instantly want a cigarette is the Sopranos. They're just really? every see every scene they're like, <sighs> where I'm like, oh, give me some of that shit, baby. Did you watch that Sopranos movie? I did. It was terrible. Real, I'll try you did. I, I forgot you lamented about that. I mean, the stuff with Tony Soprano must have been okay, though, right? Because it's not really about him. 
It was just, it was just the story it was just shit. It really wasn't that good, honestly. Like, I mean, you're not missing out if you haven't seen it. Well, I want, I'd like you to watch it so we can discuss it. Um, I feel like there's there, there's room somewhere for us to have a very lengthy conversation about a film now and again because we have these little bits before the guests come in, which I, I, mm-hmm. I really do enjoy. But I feel like we need to sit and watch a film almost together from across the ocean. Ooh, so Netflix like and chill with me, Tom. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Um, I'll get I'll get Kaz to sit next to you. So I'll be like, okay, Kaz, now you reach into his pants and start jerking him off. I'm gonna look over to his right and I'm gonna shake my head like this. And Is then it'll this- be a tet. Hmm? There's this thing on on Twitter um, called Places, and it's literally just you you press it, and it's like somebody just talking and people listening. It's huh. fucking great, right? You just talk, people listen. You can give people options to 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 talk and listen and whatever as well. And mm-hmm. um, I found this because I was on Twitter, and I found that Tara Strong was uh, in this this thing. This poor, this girl was. I don't want to say too much because it was kind of personal. I mean, she was doing it publicly, but I don't want to like use this girl as a anyway this girl was pouring a heart out to tara strong and it was all really full on and there's a lot of celebrities that would have gone ah this is too much for me i'll see you later guys but she was tara strong was lovely she was really really supportive of this girl um so i sat i got to sit and listen to this and i feel like there's maybe something we can do with that yeah you think so Hmm. Hmm. movie wise yeah but i mean like so put a movie on Right, we go right three, two, two, one, and everybody played out. Play, play the movie, and we're just like, yes. Like, oh shit, that guy's dead. He's dying. Oh, why are you going back upstairs? Don't go back upstairs. Don't go in the room. Like, that's that hilarious. Cool. That would be cool. record them as well. That'd be really cool. Yeah, all right, fucking, that's something we could do. The, the once again, we always face the never-ending clock, though, because like you're five hours ahead of me, I'm you know five hours mm. behind you, obviously. So it's like if we want to do it at like a weird or like a normal time to me or a normal time to you, it's always like you know we get fucked. That's why I'm so amazed that we're doing this right now because right now it is almost midnight to Alex. It is. It's almost midnight for me. I'm a big boy. After I, don't, I don't have a bedtime, guys. I stay no, up because- as late as I want. Um, so when, when our guest does come on, I'm going to introduce him only by first name and what he does, not his last name. I will let him tell you his last name because especially after like, you know, Ken was so gracious to be like, no, it's, it's actually this, but he, everyone says like you do. I was like, oh, that's so nice. I'm not going to butcher this next guest name. I'm letting him introduce himself. Um, we, we could talk a little bit about our guest. Not, not like, I don't, I don't want to like, you know, spoil anything yet, but I've it, been, lots, was, I've been watching some of their stuff today and it's really good. And it's actually made me re-download TikTok. So I, I really? deleted it because I wasn't really using it. I did that thing where you, you know, when you, you trust your phone to delete shit mm-hmm. automatically and you're like, oh, I don't, I don't care as long as you free up the space. And it deleted TikTok because I don't use it. <laughs> I like, well, if I don't use it, I don't need it. But now I do because, mm. and also I want to get the uh, the login off Jane, Jamie for our TikTok. I feel like because uh, he, yes. he's got the login details for that. I feel like we could those little videos that I make uh, that mm. I'm making now for your Instagram. I feel like we could chuck them on TikTok. That'd be quite cool. Uh, when was the last time you spoke to Jamie? Uh, Jamie and and Tom, of course, you know from the the Chronicles. They used to be on our channel, and then they got the opportunity to go off and you know be birds spread and go, their wings. spread their wings and fly which they did and i i haven't checked in on, on a long time because i've just been so busy i know you've been um, even busier than me i can't remember the last i think i i wrote to jamie and i was like oh dude i haven't spoken to you in ages i feel terrible and he's like that's okay you know we'd be, 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 you know oh, we're yeah. both adults you know that's oh, yeah. kind of what happens jamie's so um, laid back he's he's never one of those guys be like well you haven't talked to me in fucking three months now you're the asshole and alex who him. alex fucking who <laughs> um yeah that that was so funny when fucking when i i got the guest on my own show by the way that what a weird feeling that was was to be a guest on a show that you and me started like because we still do this show this is our show we may have changed name a few times we might have changed like the setup and the layout and all that type of stuff but we have never like changed you and me we, we figured out who we were very early on right like we we did how many episodes did we do with the old style Thor skin. Uh, I think we did it from like it's gonna be like episode forty six or something like that. I don't think it was that late in, that much in and into it. But we did it to like from there to like episode one hundred because we made a big deal out of that, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Um, and then we we sort of KO'd it, and then we carried on this. We've done a lot, a lot together. Yes, we have. Um, we have. I'm, we've done a ton. 
journey of many miles. And I, I like to think about it. I like to think back on it sometimes and be like, wow, like I used to be that guy. And I attribute everything that I do now to what we do. Like the reason I can manage a business and talk to uh, customers and kind of like figure out what's going on in their head is all because of this. But prior to that, I was, I was a fine talker, but never to the extent I am now. So when I think about like some of the cringier episodes of uh, Thorskin, God, like you ever listen back to those? Do those ever like come across? I fucking- actually posted a link to our f- mine Jimmy's first episode uh, the other day, and it was such a weird <laughs> listen because it was fucking awful. <laughs> it was. I mean, I, I I like that though because you listen back, and you're like, "Fuck, we were terrible," uh, but we're not too bad now. And this is this is what frustrates me a bit because I feel like we could we're quite talented in what we do and we speak to some brilliant people um oh and adam's here he's oh is he yes he is all right all right right. um adam if you are ready sir give us a thumbs up oh he's turned his camera off for a second okay that's fine we'll wait uh we'll Uh, wait till he he comes back on um and we're not gonna tell you anything else about adam we're gonna kind of like do this whole he's back he's back all right um give alex a thumbs up if you're ready sir can you hear us? You might be able to hear us. You might, you might maybe, be able to hear us. Maybe, 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 maybe. maybe. Should, we, should, we, should we try it? Should we just bring him in and see what happens? Um. Yeah, we can do. Okay. So. Oh. Is. Okay. All right. Let me let me do the slight introduction. Okay, guys. So, I was I was watching a yep. face. Okay, I was watching a Facebook video a couple weeks back, and I found this very catchy thing of this group that was singing the Pokemon song, and I loved the singer. He had so much charisma. He he had like this metronome thing about him, and there was just something about him that really spoke to me. So I wrote to him, and I, I don't expect anyone to ever write back, but he wrote back like that night and was like, "Yeah, sure, I'd love to do your show." And so that's how we are bringing you our first, our second guest of the day. But this guest right now, um, Adam from Adam and the Metalhawks. Here he is. Let's see if this works. That's right. Hello, Adam. Can you hear us? Hello. Hello. Can you hear us? I think they're just setting it up now. I won't. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Well, we'll got keep some nice knuckles. I, I love that. Oh, I know. Is, right? some, is he on stage? Is he I on think stage? He's on stage. Oh, it's he's got connection. bad connection. Uh, well, we'll uh, we'll, we'll let him figure it out really quick. We, 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 well, okay. Well, I'm just going to type to Adam that we've uh, removed. Right. I'm going to talk about nothing. So when I saw this video, like there was just so much. Like it, it was so simple, so simple. And sometimes the simplest things are the best things. And when music speaks to you whether it be from um like uh just because nostalgia which is what that did i was like oh the pokemon song i love the pokemon song um or it ends up being something like wow or or, or it turns into something else is really what it does so like i i listened to it because it's pokemon song but then i listened to every single video they had because it just turned into something far better and the fact that the guest is literally trying to do this from what looks like a stage, like I think he took time off from doing like live shit to come on the show is just beyond me. But if everything doesn't work out, guys, we will bring it at another point in time. We will you know, figure something out. But like in the midst of trying to talk to uh, their manager, it seemed like they were very busy. And the fact is they're blowing up on all the social medias, like every single one. They, was, this, was this on TikTok, by the way, that you, you found them and you were watching one after the other after the other? No, nope. um, I'm not a TikTok guy. And right now I've kind of stood my grounds on TikTok, especially like I, I love the fact that my wife and my daughter do it. Right. Like they do it. They make videos. They show each other videos. But it, it's too quick of... Um, a media for me to absorb i like long drawn out i like podcasts I like books I like movies when things are just that quick and that like repetitious i i can't sing my teeth into it so when i saw his video on facebook i went to youtube which is my go-to um i have to be in the mood i suppose this is why i didn't i've used it for so long i i agree totally agree but i'm um, mm. like okay i feel like we got the whole band there yeah. do we I this is like, gonna be interesting. My God, this is gonna they're be trying to set it up at the moment. So they're trying to set up. They, they got bad connection at the moment. Um, so I think they're trying That's to good. find a good spot to find connection and put the, wow. the phone down. Um, so but, 
Now, here's the thing, guys, is if this thing does not work out, nobody's going to say something now because right now it seems like they are incredibly busy. And the fact is, like, they're taking time out of their very busy real (laughs) schedule to bullshit with us in our non busy schedule. If you guys have to, you can go uh, just straight voice if that seems to work better. We really, I mean, like, don't wrong. We want to see you. Hello. 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 Hey, Hi. I think we're good. I think we're good. How's it going? Hello, hello. Okay. Um. So I, I did a slight introduction, but I wasn't going to put your last name, Adam. How do you say your last name? As a galian. As a galian. Okay. So I'm That's glad I didn't. One, yeah. it, it, it's not easy, man. Like he's Whiteley. <laughs> I'm Bruno. So it, it I don't know, like, man. No. There's something really sexy about that name. I mean, like if I was going to introduce <laughs> yeah. an, an artist onto a stage, but like. It's Adam as a Galian. Like that's just so oh. rock and roll. I love it. I love it. Crazy, now you mention it. <laughs> yeah. All right, gentlemen. So I came across you on Facebook. I was just you know watching videos late one night, and I came across you guys doing the Pokemon theme song, which is what led me to everything else. Like that was fantastic. <laughs> but I mean, like it, it's one thing to come across a silly little song that you have nostalgia for. It's another thing to all of a sudden fall in love with everything you guys have done. How long have you been musicians? Uh, I mean, pretty much our whole lives, uh, you know, since probably kindergarten, you know, we've all loved rock music. And just as soon as we could pick up an instrument, we've been doing it. Excellent. Um, I mean, like, I, I played uh, bass for, for a hot second. I sucked at it. I, I even played in jazz band in high school because, like, they wouldn't let you play. I, I also had to play the trumpet because they wouldn't let you in jazz band unless you played, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, do I suck? Uh, I suck. <laughs> well, I, I was really good at, like, following the movements of my next door neighbor trumpeteer. So I was like, all right, what's he doing? That looks good. That looks good. All right. But I, the, the one thing I gained from it was I learned how to read uh, notature because tablature was, you know, the way that everybody else was doing it. Is that how it, I mean, you, you guys are really, really, how old are you guys? Let's start off there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, we're all pretty much like uh, early, 20s. early 20s, something, you know, <laughs> early, late 20s, uh, you know, 20s, yeah. <laughs> something along, along there. You know, late 20s. Old enough to know better. That's what <laughs> yes. I am. And, uh, old enough to know we better. actually, we actually have a, a cool little announcement here, a little exclusive, if you will. Uh, you might notice that that we're a four piece, but there's only three people here. That's because we have a new member that we'd like to introduce right now, <laughs> live on the air. Are you guys ready? Oh yeah, yeah. Fuck yes, we're ready. All right, prepare to have your minds blown. I would like to introduce. Come on in, Griffin. Where am I going? Come right here, I'll Griffin right here. McCarthy, everybody. Hey. hey. Griffin, hello. How are you? Here uh, I am. Are you wearing a dead Kennedy shirt, sir? Is that I'm you? wearing an Ozzy shirt. Oh, yeah, excellent. Ozzy. Yeah, Ozzy, well, like, there it is. Here, show all, it all I could see was like the very little bit of the lettering. Funnily enough, like I, I fell in love with Ozzy a long time ago, but then I listened to Black Sabbath. And even though it's like kind of the same thing, they are vastly different. Do you agree or disagree? I I definitely agree. I feel like Ozzy's music is a lot more, I don't know, more of a commercial sound. It's a lot lighter to me. I feel like Black Sabbath is just, it hits so much different. It's heavier to it, me. It does it's make a, a huge such difference. A, it's also just such that, it's that root to that future metal genre. It's just, they're the pioneers of that whole you've thing. Got, you've yes. got White Stripes, you've got Rack and Tears, and then you got Jack White. On by himself, you know, he's kind of like, it's not quite the same, you know, kind of like, yay, when you do more uh, white stripe stuff, Jack, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it makes a huge difference, doesn't it? So um, let, let's take it all the way back. Where does it all start for you guys? Uh, I mean, this question, I mean, obviously there was, obviously there was Adam with Idol. He was on back in 2015, but meanwhile, Johnny and I, the two, the, the two of us, the two of us were in this band called Metal Hawks. We had met at a school talent show. We started jamming, and we met Adam because we were playing at this music venue on Long Island where we're from. And this guy said, "Hey, I'm working on the solo project with this guy Adam. He was on American Idol. Do you want to jam with him?" And got together, started jamming, and pretty much been taking it from there. Just became a whole different thing for the better. See, the thing is, like, I I'm not. 
with it and i know i'm <laughs> dating myself just by saying that i'm not with anything like my music catalog it, it rarely does it ever get like penetrated by something new like the newest thing i heard was um <laughs> well, you have to put the... it like that man <laughs> because i'm an old man and i like to say things like that so people understand <laughs> who i am so like I, I heard like run the jewels a few years back i was like oh my god i found something new mike and i i told alex he's like yeah man that's like 12 years old at this point what the fuck are you doing <laughs> um so when you guys like penetrated me i was like oh shit something <laughs> fucking new <laughs> where does the sound come from is it classically introduced is, is it just something you kind of develop like where does it all come from uh i mean we we all have classic rock influences uh you know kiss aerosmith guns and roses uh the 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 boys are big van halen fans uh, you could probably yeah, tell yeah. that from johnny just touching a guitar <laughs> Uh, I, got the, I got the Van Halen merch. I got the Wolf Gang. What the hell's going on oh, here? What? Oh. I'm sure they the really appreciate Gamble. that. I got the Ace of Spades. <laughs> Fuck. Yes. I don't. I don't see any Nickelback amongst you. Ah! Uh, don't be <laughs> mean to Nickelback. They. They. they, they uh, no, I think that was yeah. left that one home. I no, think. no, 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 no. That, <laughs> that, that was an absolute test, by the way, because I, be, I love Nickelback. I, um, I feel like. I feel like the uh, Nickelback Alex, thing yeah. is um, is like a, a, a tribal thing. You've got to hate Nickelback to be cool kind of thing. I think they're really good. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, it was a test. Well, a Alex, does, uh, Alex does a radio show. I do. And um, what's the response when you play Nickelback? I mean, I think there's actually a lot of people that ask for it nowadays. Yeah, they do. They do. I have this thing where um, a guy comes on and goes, uh, this is Naughty Talk with Alex Whiteley. Uh, he goes by Jeepers. I hope he doesn't play no Nickelback. And then I play Nickelback straight afterwards. <laughs> it's just a cheesy little thing that I do. People ask, people ask for that segment. They want that to come back. Mm -hmm. right. So, so Adam, how does one get on fucking American Idol? Like, I mean, I I obviously know what it is, but like, I didn't even know you were on there until I like started going through all the YouTube. And you guys have a fuck ton of YouTube videos, by the way. It's just so many. So I was like, all right, let's start the top and work away the bomb. And eventually. I end up on Adam on fucking American Idol. How's that happen? Yeah, so I mean, there there was this thing in uh, Disney World in Florida called the American Idol Experience, and it was like pretty much like a karaoke contest type thing they do every day, uh, and it would be kind of in the style of American Idol, and uh, and I won that show for the day. So they gave you a little ticket, so you got to skip the line for the real American Idol audition. So that was kind of the only reason I'd do it because standing in line for you know twelve hours or whatever I won't do it at Disney World, let alone for American Idol. So, <laughs> uh, but I got to skip the line, so I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna go down there and try it. Why not? And uh, and they just kept having me sing more. I was like, hey, I'm are going to Hollywood. I'll go to Hollywood. You know, going to uh, to L. A. Let's go. And uh, so that was really fun. And uh, I just I was just along for the ride. Now, really what, do, what do your parents say in a situation like that? Because obviously, like you, you go to you go to Orlando, I'm I'm sure to go to Disney World, not to actually do this. Do you just like stumble yeah. across and you're like, oh, I'm gonna fucking try this? Or were they like, hey, hey, Adam, th there's a thing over there. You're a great singer. You should try this. So that's funny that you mentioned my parents because my mom and dad are big supporters, of course. And uh, my mom is actually why I did it in the first place because uh, uh, we we go to Disney a bunch and. Yeah. Uh, uh, by the end of the vacation, she was like, you got to do it. You got to do it. And so I was like, all right, I guess I got to do it. It was around Mother's Day. She's like, it's my Mother's Day present. You got to do it. Uh, <laughs> so if it weren't for her, I wouldn't have done any of it. So I'm so very wow. grateful. Oh, shit. So I'm sure you like wake up every morning like, I love you, mom. Thank you for everything, for giving birth <laughs> to me, for pushing me to American Idol, the whole thing. See, you, you go to Disney World, get a ticket to go on American Idol. I go to Disney World. If I get a ticket, the worst, you know, the best thing that's gonna happen is I end up blowing some dude and be like, "Well, I guess that was worth the twelve hours standing here." Do I really have to do this? I guess I am. Um, so that's what happens to me. You get to go on fucking American Idol. So y you are still in school at the time this happens. That was, that was yeah, a question. I was actually <laughs> at FIT uh, in the in Manhattan uh, doing some toy design. And uh, yeah, and then what? I was like, jump on, like, jump on the show, like McFarlane toys. Like, what do you mean toy design? Like toys, it? like yeah, yeah. Like, like Fisher Price, I actually worked for. Uh, and I, you ever make any toys for mom and dad? 
Whoa. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I was waiting for that moment. I was waiting for a break to be like, they're big rubber willies, Tom. That's what they are. Um. Oh, that makes sense. That makes all sense. More, I think more preschool, you know. All right. <laughs> right. Well, exactly. you know, preschool's got to learn about sex eventually. It's not. It's only weird if they do it. Um. So you're working at, at – you're in school. You're working on toys. And then you have this opportunity to go to Hollywood to sing on stage. Like that, that's fucking, that's so crazy to me. Obviously like you come back home and you must be like this huge celebrity at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I would be close to Broadway and like voiceover auditions and commercials and stuff. Uh, Cause I always just love being in front of the camera and performing and just kind of making people laugh. Uh, so it was kind of a perfect fit. And after I was on American Idol, I uh, just decided this was the path I'd want to take and just pushing it hard. Yeah. Wow. Who who inspires you to sort of get up and do this every day? And we'll go around the room. Um, if it's a person in each of your guys' lives that you're like, I want to do it for this person. Ryan, go. <laughs> <laughs> like, who do I do this for? Yeah, who inspires you to get up and do this? Is it somebody you want to be like? Is there a family member you want to make proud? Or is there a girl? I don't know. What, how, how, who is it that drives you? Well, there's a few girls. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Fuck yeah, there is. <laughs> Fuck yeah, there is. There's always a few girls, bro. I mean, to, uh, to answer your question, though, I mean, obviously my family is very supportive of what we do. All the families are very supportive. So, you know, we do it for them. We do it for ourselves because we love the music. We've been obsessed with it our whole lives. And we do it for the fans because, you know, we, we're giving rock and roll a second home. I mean, rock and roll was never dead to begin with. It's just never, it's just not in the forefront. And that's our mission as a band to just bring rock and love roll that. back. To rock. Love that a lot. Love it a lot. Oh, love that. All right. Next. Johnny, go. Uh, it's a good question. See, I would say, like, family members, you know, I'm going to be different. Oh. I say the band itself. You need everybody. Oh, so I do it for you band. guys. I do it for you guys. He's doing it for the band. <laughs> He's doing, doing it for the for the love of music, for the love um, of rock. But by, by the way, just just FYI, I actually messaged two All guys. Right, I Griffin, go. Johnny. Yeah, after yeah, yeah Griffin, go. <laughs> well, you just say like, yeah. Question, but if I were to if I were to narrow it down to a couple of different angles, I'd definitely say the band. <laughs> if, if all the pieces aren't working, then it's never gonna work. And I just, I think definitely for myself, because I've always wanted to make this a career. Ever since I was like nine or eight years old, I knew right off the bat that this is what I wanted to do. And and, uh, it'd be a real shame if I gave up early. And I don't think I ever will. This is is the path that I want. Very good. Make me yeah. And I will add to the party, Jack Black. If you're, yes, I'm doing it for you. <laughs> which, which actually leads me <laughs> to. Oh, I'm doing it for you also. And Neil. That leads me to a very interesting question. Um, I I saw that video. What's it like to have Jack Black recognize you as a person on this fucking planet? I gotta know. <laughs> uh crazy yeah it was pretty unreal i mean at, at at first uh we didn't even know it happened ryan actually stumbled upon it just on his for you page no, on, not, on tiktok on page. I, at first i showed my dad before i showed the guys because i had to show him i was, he was in like his office whatever doing his stuff and i come behind i was like dad i'm like this where's my phone <laughs> i'm like dad dad look at this jack black jack black dude what us. And he was like, "You guys fucking did it! You guys got Jack Black you!" And it was just so so crazy, man. That video to this day has over seventy five million views. Wow! So I can't ask for any more on that end. That's See, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't really it matter. I, guess. I mean. No, you go ahead, please, please, please. We're here to talk to you guys, really. So you you over talk me. If I talk over you, yeah, you I just mean, say, "Shut I... the fuck up, Tom." I'm here to talk. Shut the fuck up, Tom. He's trying to talk. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, I mean, we, we weren't exactly trying uh, at first to get his his attention. His attention kind of came to us through, uh, I'm sure, a bunch of his fans and just people in general on TikTok were commenting, you know, this guy sounds like Jack Black. He's the new Jack Black. Is this Jack Black's son? Is this his cousin? Like, who is this? Uh, and so finally we leaned into it and we were just like, all right, that's it. We got to get him to duet us. And we did our little challenge of each day. 
like singing a little Jack Black song or a song, uh, you know, that would reminiscent of Jack Black. And uh, and then eventually he just did it. I, I, there are too many comments on his videos that are like, go do it, AMH. You got to do Adam. Come on. Which your son. I, I must <laughs> I must commend you. I must commend you guys, because like if you think about something like, um, oh, fuck, what's that band? Who's uh, Greta Van Fleet? Greta Van Fleet really kind of like rest their laurels on the fact that they sound a lot like Zed Led Zeppelin. So if you want to see Led Zeppelin, you're not going to be able to see Led Zeppelin, but you can go see Greta Van Fleet. You guys could have yeah. just rode the coattails of, oh, we sound like X, Y, and Z, but instead you decide to do your own, do your own thing. I mean, so we, we have to draw attention to the fact that you guys are – Oh, and they disappeared. They're gone. Yeah, we, we, just to let the listeners know that if this is badly edited, it's because we are having a few ah, internet issues. It's all right. It's it's all good, guys. So you where are you? Where are you doing it from right now? Just tell the listeners. Like if where are we? Where are we recording from? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like we saw we saw a stage. Like obviously you're not in your house, or else you'd have like. Boom. you know, Oh, right. where is it? We're at Elite Sound Studios. Oh, there pew, 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 pew. <laughs> okay, I've got one of them. This is where we like to rehearse and jam. <laughs> oh, God, there's so much. Hey, hey, how's it going? Welcome to no, the You so Suck. Like that, so, yeah. The fact that you guys <laughs> took like the time to like come on the show, even though like obviously you have a lot of shit going on. One, we really appreciate that. But if any of the mm. listeners are like, what what's going on? That's because like they literally just like are doing this on their phone, which is fucking commendable because um we, we've had plenty of experiences. People have bad audio, people have like bad connections, and they just don't want to do it at this point. But you guys are so fucking dedicated and thank you very much that you're still fucking doing it. So thank you again for that. Of course. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I love oh, it. What well, I, I mean sorry, go on, Tom. No, I was gonna say we're not done yet. We're just no, fucking, we're not done yet. Don't gonna... fucking go yet. Don't yeah, fucking yeah, go. Don't, don't <laughs> leave it. Don't leave it. <laughs> don't there, leave it. <laughs> I, I, I like All right, guys, see you about. later. Uh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> I liked what you were talking about um, when you were talking about um, rock not being in the forefront anymore because it's been one of my biggest gripes, especially with um, with doing the radio as well. I mean, one of the things I, I like to do is I like to flip it on its head. I don't, when I was growing growing up, there'd be rock and there'd be there'd be pop and there'd be hip hop all together on the radio, and then it started sort of they started weaning rock away. Uh, so I am weaning pop away from my show. So I've the more, there's more and more alternative rock shit on my show every week, which is great. <laughs> right. Um, what, I mean, what would what what kind of an influence would you like to have on the on the rock? How do you think things can get better with rock music today? Connecting, yes, we are having trouble connecting. There we are. There we go. It, once again, if if the video ends up hindering the audio, we'd rather have the audio. So you guys have to shut off the video just to keep it going. We have no problems with that. We're not going to be like, oh my god, why would they do that? We're going to be like, oh okay, they're trying to like keep the thing. Which whichever way, I, don't wrong. No, this great. works too. Uh, should we try that for a little bit and see if it? If it helps? I mean, yeah, that might help. I can also give you my number to or to use on WhatsApp if you wanted to, because I can do pop, pop, phone calls. Can you? You can I do can. that on a phone call. You you can do that on WhatsApp. Why aren't we doing that right now? Then what are we doing? Should, I mean, we can try that if you want. Let's just try. Yeah. It. Let's, let's see how we get on. Let's see how we get on, guys. Yeah, let's see how we go with this. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, what, what my my question was, um, how do you think things can be improved with um, the rock music in in the general at the moment? Um, I mean, well, so we're we're not coming in trying to kind of reinvent rock music, and we're not really. S- trying to claim that that you know we're bringing you the best rock music ever made uh we just want to bring the emotion and feeling that those classic rock songs uh had and i feel like modern pop music doesn't have that it's all kind of just in a studio at the same beats and same sounds over and over again or just sampling uh, and not not kind of just bringing that raw energy of like a live performance of real instruments being played uh, and no auto tune and just kind of raw rock and roll. And I think that's what we're trying to bring back, you know, that feeling of rock uh, and not so much just we're we're going to reinvent rock. I mean, you know, just we want to slot in amongst the greats. I think someone needs to do something. I mean, like uh, the there's there's been a few um, 
a few bands. I mean, one of my greatest examples at the moment that I've really sort of starting to break through. And I've, I was listening to the, the radio and they came on the radio and that's Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes, which I absolutely adore. Um, that's over here in the UK. I don't know what's going on in America, but there's like one or two bands coming through that weren't, wouldn't have come through a few years ago. So I feel like something's happening. I feel like we need a yeah. new, and we need some, yeah. I'm excited. Need, That's what I'm saying. Need, I mean, especially some... after lockdowns and mandates uh, are, are officially done, you know, I mean, you guys are moving faster, which is awesome. And I can't wait to come over there. Uh, but yes, you know, uh, so congrats on that. But once everybody else catches up and we're kind of done with it, uh, I feel like the those rock bands that are stuck in their garages right now are going to come out and everybody's going to want to go to a live show you know, go to a bar, listen to live music. Mm. And so there, we might see a big resurgence, which will be great. One of the things I'm seeing a lot, and this is, um, this is just nuts. There's, there's new festivals being created. There's like, uh, there's so many, the, the festival season this year in the UK is so fucking intense. There's one every week. There's two every week. It's just nuts. Right. And um, we've wow. we seen like a resurgence of interest in bands of yesteryear, but I'm talking about bands that might not have been as big back then. So, um, you know, things like bands like feeder, uh, and um, uh, uh, what was the other one? There's, there's just bands coming. Athlete. I saw Athlete the other day. I haven't heard of Athlete for years, but these are bands that were like, if you were going to grade them, I don't know, C class, B class bands that are just suddenly just come out of nowhere again. So that shows to me that there is a there are, there is a hunger out there for alternative indie rock music that just was vacant for a long, long time. So something's happening. Yeah, Something's yeah, happening. definitely. I mean, you know, you got to imagine that everybody's been working on new songs, new shows, uh, you know, like recording, uh, just kind of stuff that we've had to do as musicians that can't play live. We, you know, you got to kind of work on the other side of it. Uh, but of course, social media is just a huge part of it, too. I mean, uh, you know, we were playing shows maybe once or twice a month uh, before everything happened in the pandemic. And uh, once that happened, we were, we decided we have to jump on TikTok. Everybody's telling us you have to do it. Uh, so that was the kind of the perfect opportunity when it's like, all right, we can't play shows. We can't really meet up to write songs. Uh, why don't we just make these silly videos and just try to build a following? And, and who knew how it would take off? Um, so Alex brought up a very valid point about the, the sound of like, you know, when you play live, how important is fidelity to you guys? So like you think about a band like rush rush, it really tries to sound like when you buy a rush CD or, you know, the MP, whatever it is, once again, dating the fuck out of myself. When, when you listen to yeah. rush, they want to sound like rush. When you, you listen to them, how important is that to you guys? Do you really care? Do you want to sound different than you sound on the record? Like what, what's that mean to you? I mean, fidelity, fidelity is definitely important, but that doesn't restrict us from playing the songs exactly like we do live. Like some songs will kind of vamp parts in between to really get the crowd going. Like Long Die Rock is a perfect example of that because on our last record, it's like a short little three-minute anthemic sort of song. But then when we go out and play it live, it's like a whole five to six-minute ordeal. We're splitting, the, we're splitting the crowd up like left, left side say long, middle section say die, right side say rock. And we just we just go crazy with it. So yeah, fidelity is important, but it, it's also important to bring that live element into it also. Excellent. Um, so answer this. Like you, you guys join up together, you like obviously you guys meet up with Adam, like you decide that you're gonna do this band thing. To walk us through like the first time that you realized that people were really getting into your stuff. Like where was it? Where were you? Like what was going on at that time? Um, I mean, so well, it was really cool. I, I think after all the uh, the Jack Black video and uh, the kind of like blue bowls on our heads uh, for TikTok uh, era, uh, it was really cool to see. We had a couple of music videos out on YouTube. And of course, we had our other social media platforms going. And just the huge response, uh, kind of like a wave coming onto our uh, our YouTube channel and just kind of like uh, that first video we put out uh for wasting time that was actually mm -hmm. the first vid uh, first song that we wrote together and we made the video ourselves uh just kind of super bare bones and we we loved how it came out and it kind of got got okay views when it first came out uh but of course after the huge social media push 
now it's at like half a million views and uh ever the all the whole comment section is just like supporting us and like how how do these guys aren't blown up like what this is insane like rocks coming back blah 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 <laughs> the so, button, rocks coming know. back yeah, so many that, people that like was us. kind of the first <laughs> real thought of like maybe our music actually is good you know I, who knows uh, and now we're working on a new album, so we're really excited to see what the impressions are of this new stuff that we're working on because we're really excited. What is it? What's the pressure like writing a new album now after all of that? <laughs> I mean, honestly, there isn't a lot of pressure, at least from a business standpoint, because we're independent. We're not signed to a label or anything, so we can kind of go about things on our own pace. But at the same time, we do like to try and put a little pressure on ourselves. Like, all right, let's try and get this album out by this date or whatever. You know, just to have something for when we go back out on the road. So we're in the middle of an album right now. We're about two-thirds of the way done. And hopefully we'll get it out by the first half of this year. Nice, nice. And the, the writing process itself, is this songs from you guys individually or by yourself? Or do you just guys sit around the table like, well, I need some ideas, guys. I need some ideas. And you start <laughs> writing shit down, you know? How's that yeah, going? I mean, we we definitely collaborate uh, throughout the whole process. You know, sometimes it's Johnny or Ryan coming in with a riff. Uh, sometimes I'll come in with a melody, or just yeah, you know, we'll we'll kind of uh, communicate with each other. Like I, I got this idea, and we will all work on it together. Sometimes Griffin will come in with four out al- four albums worth of material. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> real <laughs> They don't say that. That's why we figured I'd put it out there now. So. <laughs> now, to the to the layman like me and Alex. Me and Alex are not musicians. Hey, fuck we, you. Uh, oh, 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 I'm so sorry. I forgot about the great she rock legend that is Alex. Yeah, yeah, you. Well, you know. Anyways, so like we we don't make music. We definitely don't write music. We definitely don't do any of that type of stuff. We just talk back and forth, and that's our art. Uh, which comes first? Is it the music or is it the lyrics? Uh, for us, for us, usually it's the it's the the music. Um, you know, sometimes uh, when we're first incepting a. Uh, uh, a melody in the into the song there's a, a name of the song or like a lyric that goes with the melody uh but most of the time i'll just kind of do it in gibberish to figure out a melody and then put words to it after and that's kind of how i like to work at least lyric wise what uh what about the rest of you i mean like adam said usually johnny and i will come in with a riff or so like even on personal, sometimes I'll come up with a whole song. Or other times when we write songs, we'll use parts of other songs that we never wrote. And it's like three different songs. But every song is written differently. Like Backwards is a perfect example. We didn't even have a melody or anything for that song. I think Adam just said his idea was, why don't we have a song called Backwards? And for the music video, everything is happening in reverse. And so pretty much right after that, we had written the melody. It came together pretty easily. And then after the pandemic, we started working on a music video. And now I think it's got over 300,000 views on YouTube now. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, I mean, Adam Yauch uh, from the Beastie Boys, that boom, 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 that, that bass, it was just like dicking around on his bass guitar. And now they made right. sabotage, just from dicking around <laughs> with the bass guitar. You know, and that's one of the most iconic riffs ever. Um it's, a, yep. it's, it's, it's it's amazing when Sometimes you guys you have... You never um, know what could come out, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, what I do have to ask, though, are you guys living the fucking dream right now? Are you do, doing the parties? <laughs> are you fu- getting fucked up every night? Are you having a good time? <laughs> what does it feel like every to be a rock star night. for so... you guys right now? <laughs> Eight days a week, my brother. I mean, oh, I'm God. living the dream because I'm waking up at three in the afternoon. That's, <laughs> that's the dream right there. <laughs> You were doing that before, right? You know, stay up till six and and wake up at three. But no, I mean the, the the dream I think will be more of a reality once we're able to get on the road and actually play shows. Like uh, we we uh, played a show in Texas a, while, a little while ago, and uh, ju- it was just so fun. Everybody gets on the plane, uh, you know, we get all the gear. We go to the hotel. Uh, you know, checking things out. We're, our hotel is right on the beach. Uh, you know, super like rock star lifestyle there. Yeah. 
Uh, so I think that's where it'll be more living the dream. This is like, uh, you know, everybody, uh, can we do rehearsal uh, on Thursday? Oh, yeah, I guess that's good. Okay. <laughs> this, this, is the, this is the boring part of the dream. The cameras never show. Yeah, you know, so that's kind of where we're at right now. But hopefully once the summer comes and we're able to have some shows again, that's, that's going to be the dream right there. And hopefully we can release Excellent. the album before summertime and just hit the ground running. Fuck yes. I mean, that that's the way to go. It's like summertime is a great time for music. People are driving the car. They turn up the music. Like, I feel like I listen to more music in the summer than any other time of the month just because there's something about that vitamin D, you know? It just kind yeah, of like, yeah. pumps you forward. I feel like your, summer, your song of the summer sort of just hits you unintentionally, doesn't it? You know, yes. and it can be anything yeah. from any genre. I mean, I remember I was listening to, I, I remember when uh, Blink-182, they released that California album. I was like, all right, then let's listen to this shit. Fucking put it in or whatever <laughs> it was. And um, it was fucking incredible. I was like, oh my God, this is really, really good. And all summer long, I was like, Los Angeles. <laughs> I didn't expect to like it, but I did, you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was so, my interpretation of that album also. <laughs> I did not expect to like California, but it was excellent. It was an really excellent good. record. So one of the things that's very that's noticeable in, in, in your guys' music... Oh, yeah, absolutely. He is phenomenal. There's a reason that, like, it's funny how you can go from being just, like, this very tatted up, like, you know, fast drummer for a, for a really good punk band to all of a sudden, like, every single person, you're almost like a Rick Rubin at that point, where they're like, oh, no, we got to get Travis Barker to come do the beats. And then you see how much he's been integrated into, like, you know, every single song lasts, like, 15, 20 years. It's, it's fucking phenomenal. Oh, yeah. That's only because he's dating one of the Kardashians. Yeah, I was gonna say he's <laughs> a fucking Kardashian. <laughs> yeah, he, he was, I mean, like, he the incredible ability to be able to, I don't know, and he's just got such a unique sound because he was tr- re- normally a core guy, like a like a drum core guy. So he has mm-hmm. all those chops, and he's able to incorporate that into his punk drumming, which is, I mean, it's it's unheard of, and it just does it so well. Um, and he mm-hmm. does everything in one take. Everything you hear is one take. Every song he does he won't do it he won't splice it up he won't comp anything everything you hear is uh, one take when um my first concert ever my first my <laughs> first can't. like i mean nuts my 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 uh, my first CD was actually Cool The Old Gangsters Paradise, but like my first concert <laughs> that I ever got to go to, I know, shut up, Alex, um, was Blink One Eight Two. They were at the fairgrounds, <laughs> it, dude. It was ridiculous. Um, <laughs> so like uh, we, we went to the fairgrounds. We had like you know really good seats, but it was pouring fucking rain. And this just speaks to who they are as a band because even though it was thundering and lightning and like there's rain all over the stage, they came out and like fuck it, we're gonna do it anyways. And like Tom DeLonge's like running across the stage playing his fucking guitar slips on his back and goes in a little bit angus young and starts doing it like that i was like god damn these fucking dudes rock so that's who influences me like uh, do you what was your guys first concert we'll go around the whole room what was your first concert mm-hmm. wow I, actually I first, actually oh i i think my first concert was seeing rush at jones beach back in 2010 i think i was like 10 oh you saw that tour nice. yeah <laughs> I can't even think. I've been to a lot of I know mine. My Ooh. first my first concert, and I will say it's a concert because they were fantastic, was in 2003. I saw the Wiggles at the Beacon Theater. <laughs> oh, I saw that and they, were, they were incredible. It was the original Wiggles. They, were, they, were, they blew my mind. <laughs> it was great. But if, and like my first real like rock concert. My big rock concert was Alice in Chains. Um, before that, I remember seeing Fountains of Wayne at the Paramount. That was cool. Fountains of Wayne. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that that was one of my first because I was I was taking lessons from a guy at the time who opened for them, and he got me tickets to go see him. So that was my first oh, like shit. rock concert. Yeah, wow. yeah, it was cool. But yep, the Wiggles. I'm, I'm taking that to <laughs> the grave. <laughs> <laughs> It's fucking amazing. All right, well, who they else? Who else wants to share their the, the, Who else wants to share the first uh, concert? Car. I'm trying to think over here. I feel like my first actual concert was a cover band of Van Halen, because my dad was oh, like shit. a huge Van Halen fan. But like an actual band, probably like Judas Priest or Ozzy. It's got to be one of those. Oh. It was a long time ago. I don't remember to be honest. Wow. 
Yeah, it was at the beach one time. Like that. It's awesome. So yeah, it's kind of um, one of those. All right, on this on the same train of thought, who is the band that you're like, fuck, I really wish I could have seen them live at some point, but you just never got the opportunity. The to fucking them. Wiggles, by the sounds of it. <laughs> <laughs> the original yeah, Wiggles. That, that's my answer, <laughs> Wiggles. Yeah, <laughs> should have said the Wiggles. I mean, I, I still haven't seen Tenacious D live. I, yeah. I feel like mm. we need to get out there and do like a little opening act for him or something, you know. And, yeah. oh, I, I, I missed their last UK tour. Awesome. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you that think it is bad. about Tenacious D that just kind of speaks to a little bit of everybody? Because it's, it, it's really, really different. Like if you put like Tenacious D's music up to anything else, it, it, there's nothing like it. What do you think about it that makes, so spe- makes it so special? I mean, Jack Black himself is just a, a, a very charismatic guy, you know, very uh, down to earth. At least uh, he seems like it. Uh, and so everybody can kind of see themselves on stage, like, you know, like being that guy. Uh, but their music themselves, I mean, the, the lyrics and the concept of the songs are usually pretty comical. But when it comes down to it, the songs themselves are actually just really good too. You know, like the it's really the, well done. The playing and the music. I mean, uh, Dave Grohl is their drummer in the studio, so you, you can't really fault their drums. You know? mm. They're both pretty damn mm. good at guitar. You know, Kyle can whip out a solo, so yeah. they they have the chops, and then they have the humor, and I think that kind of opens up the gates uh, for people that maybe didn't know they liked rock. And they just like the funny jokes, and then they they're like, you know what, this music's actually just hitting. It's true. I feel like yeah. it, fall, it falls into a category of oh, as if they just said that shit. And there's a, there's a few bands that do that. One of my guilty pleasures in the car is um, is Steel Panther. I fucking love Steel Panther. They <laughs> they, they they sing about like things them. that are really bad. You should never sing about them in public for absolute sure. But I will fucking rock it. I love that shit, but that it's, it's more of a, 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 as if someone's got away with singing about that shit. And I feel like Jack Black has the ability yeah. to sing about some of them the, taking a shit on someone's chest in the most brilliant way. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh my God. Mm. And it's still a sick rock song. You're like, oh, man, I get this. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, uh, funnily enough, like back when I was like, 13 or something i got a a mini it wasn't a mini dvd the what they weren't out yet like dvds were out but like it was uh like a not it wasn't a high eight camera it was like in between they had like little mini vhs tapes and that's how i ran uh uh you know recording shit and it was like you know this big it was a sony handy cam i fucking loved it one night me and my friends were just like at his house we were smoking some weed drinking some booze and we thought it'd be a great idea to remake um the music video to tribute because obviously the song in itself is I about need to me. see the shit top i want to see oh, no, the no, shit no. It, dude none of that shit exists anymore we also did drop like, the link really, yeah, drop uh, the link <laughs> see you guys are actually very fortunate because like back in that time like there was no transferring it to digital media there was either you had it on tape you could show your friends and family that way but like it was a whole process to you know bring it to the computer even back then like it, it, i was still using a fucking flip phone for god's sakes um how much do you guys attribute your guys success to the fact that you you, you have such ease to be able to get a hold of people and people are able to get a hold of you yeah i mean it's definitely think, at this point probably all of it <laughs> yeah we kind of did it backwards where normally you'd form your band you you write your songs you go out and perform and that's how you build your audience uh, in the hopes that uh, maybe a company will ask for your song to be in a commercial or an ad or something like that. Whereas we're kind of, we, we made our following online because of social media. And now we're able to take the songs that we wrote and go out and do shows and, and have an audience that wants to see us. So it's kind you of, have, kind of you, have like, you have like, you have like, um, <laughs> There's only a couple of bands that can say they they've like started a trend. They've started something that's pioneering. That's something that is new. Uh, and most recently, I guess Arctic Monkeys can can say that they were one of the first bands that became they they had a number one single before they'd even released it because they they had it 
online and people went fucking nuts for it. And it's just as the online um, uh, charts had opened. So they became number one before they'd even released an album. And everybody was like, what the fuck? Who are these people like? And you now, you guys go like, fuck it. We're going to throw stuff on TikTok. And it just absolutely blows up. And so like, this is the beginning of something I feel like is just going to shape the way we listen to music now. And we, we acquire new content right. and move around things, you know? It's quite cool. Um, so we did an interview earlier and the only reason I'm putting this in right now is because like we have uh, four of you guys instead of just the usual one guest. Um, Alex very brilliantly a couple episodes ago started this thing where he asked the guest to ask the next guest a question. So our last guest was the amazing Ken Faree. If anyone's a, a horror movie fan, you might recognize him from the original 1978 Dawn of the Dead. He was in uh, The Devil's Rejects and a whole bunch of stuff. The dude's a legend. And he asked a question to you guys. So if um, Alex is going to ask it, and then if each one of you could take a turn answering, that'd be fantastic. You guys game? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, right, so... Excellent. This uh, I'll, I'll, I'll um, ask the question, and this is to all four of you guys. Um, so thank you for this, uh, Ken. And the question is, if you had a chance to relive a moment and change something, what would you do? Oh, my God. Relive a moment and change something. Jeez, this is like an does SAT it question. Does our moment, or does it have to be uh... – <laughs> a moment in your life, a moment in a moment in your life that you could go back and change. What would you go and change? Oh, I was gonna say because that would have been way easier. Before COVID, I would have told yeah. everyone to get. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh shit! Good question. I mean, yeah, I know. He, he's very prolific. This dude, like, like our guests ask these questions, and I, I would ask something simple, be like, "So, what do you guys think of like, you know?" pussy um but all of our guests asked the most like prolific questions you could possibly think of i'm like damn how how are they going to answer that shit so um we'll, we'll start with you adam <laughs> i don't know if they're only going to think it's a deep question it is, it is a, deep a deep question, question. it is a deep question <laughs> what man 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 uh I mean, well, I'm going to say high school, uh, I was in the school play and uh, like musicals and stuff. I did Little Shop of Horrors. I was the voice of the plant. Oh, uh, shit. And I did Beauty, oh, yeah. Beauty and the Beast. I was like Gaston's little bitch boy that sings Gaston. <laughs> oh, uh, and I, so clearly I love being on stage. Uh, but I was always put through the, the classic high school bullshit of like the the popularity contests and the clicks and everything. And the top dog was the director of the, the high school play. It was like the click master. Uh, and so I feel like that kind of stuff might've gotten in my head a little, and it's really hard to be confident as a high schooler. Uh, so I feel like maybe I would just tell myself, have the confidence, you know, uh, and things are going to work out. You just got to keep going, you know, and, uh, even though I didn't quit, because you know you can't give up. Because yeah. I fucking am. <laughs> it would have been nice to be more confident throughout that whole process and not going. Eh, I, mm. Am I good at this? I don't really know. Uh, yeah. I I completely agree with you, Adam. Like I did not like I knew who I was growing up. Like completely. I like I, I talked to my friends. I knew who they were. But like my little sister, who I respect and I love with all my heart, she just did things that she you know, that she loved because she loved them. I kind of did things sometimes because like my friends liked it or somebody else was telling me how great it was. So she's like mm -hmm. an original. So the, the, the fact that you chose, you know, the ability to go back and just do things the way you want to do it because you want to do it, not because other people do it. That's, that's I think that kind of speaks to everyone. I got it's really angry thing. in, um, in an interview uh, last week, I was speaking to a, an actor who runs his own theater group. And one of the things I brought up was, um, Oh, that's well gay. That is, when I was in school, right, everything was gay. Oh, it's well gay, that is, right? Whether you were kissing your fucking girlfriend, whether you were, I don't know, doing something that isn't actually gay. Yeah, everything else was well gay, that is. So, like, when it comes to, like, <laughs> theatre, <laughs> when it comes to, like, theatre and music and expression your emotions and things like that, oh, it's well gay, that is. If I could go back and change something, it would be not to listen to that shit because I really wanted to do drama. I wanted to do something. I wanted to express myself, a bit like what I'm doing now. If I had, uh, like, yeah. not listened to that shit when I was in, yeah. in school, yeah. I'd have Probably be a millionaire now. Joe Rogan. I don't even fucking know, but yeah. that's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Is, there mean, anybody, is there anybody else has an answer for that? Obviously, to think about that. It's easy to think about that now, clearly, you know, 
Uh, but when you're in the moment, especially in high school, it's a completely different beast. I mean, we all know how we know. I don't think any one of us would actually want to go back to high school. Uh, but, uh, you know, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's like, uh, to, to, to tell that person that you were like, don't give a shit about anybody else. You know, it's, it's easy to say it now, but it's hard to do back then. So if we could be those people for anybody watching, just don't give a shit. It's high school. Come on. Yeah. The old people, the old people Does, um, the less you care. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yes, absolutely. And the the more you realize that like that shit doesn't matter. It, it's so funny because the old like um, saying of like, oh, you know, enjoy your friends while you have them because they're not always going to be there. And you, you take that weirdly because like you're like, no, fuck you. They're my friends. Where are they going to go? But you get older, you start doing things, you have a family, you, you lose interest in the things they're doing. And then before you know it, you're like, wow, they were right. I, I The friends that I had in high school were kind of like passing. That doesn't mean they were bad or you know not interesting. It just means that they're not the same as who you become and they can't take it with you. So that's a very interesting notion. Um, does anybody else want to take a stab at this question? Uh, I mean, I was basically going to say pretty much the same thing as Adam. You know, when I was in high school, I never really fit in with any group. I wasn't, I wasn't popular. I wasn't handsome. It wasn't really ugly. I don't think. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't really a nerdy kid either. I was just kind of myself. I was able to blend into any little group, but I was never really one particular thing. But honestly, I didn't really care. Like I said, the older I got, the less I really cared. Because, like you said, you're not, you're never going to see 99 percent of those people again. So. Mm. What are they, why should you care what they have to think? Absolutely. But, you know, as far as, like, going back and changing stuff, it's just nothing I've ever really thought about because, you know, you live in the moment. Stuff happens in the past. You can't change it. And all I can do is just is just move forward and do things the way you think you should do them. The, the funny nice thing... Nice. Love it. The, Love it. The, Thank uh, you. <laughs> the, the funny the thing about this you, absolutely live in the live in the present and the funny thing about this question is like you guys have obviously become who you've become based off the life experiences that you've built and the things you've done so like the the question of like what would i change it's like well if i change something would that not lead me to where i am now if i decided to go a different path or whatever it might be so it's 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 a hard question i, I love the fact that you guys are all taking wax ass who who else wants to take whack at it I got one. Okay. I got one too. <laughs> so when I think about a question like this, I usually go and think about my music career choices. I can't say that I've made choices within my music career that I regret. Everything has led me to develop into a better musician, into a more knowledgeable businessman, et cetera, et cetera, except one. So, uh -oh. I got asked to sub for this band playing at a club on Long Island called Revolution. And they were doing all Tenacious D covers. Go oh, oh, my God. Whoa. So, I rushed my butt down. I learned, like, six or seven Tenacious D songs in, like, an hour. And then I played. I should have never taken that gig because <laughs> I wound up meeting a girl who destroyed me and just complete it was just like the worst possible timing worst relationship that i could have asked for and uh yeah i would have if i hadn't taken that gig i would have never met her and everything would have been fine and i know it would have been oh fine God. because when she dumped me covid happened so nothing was happening anyway <laughs> so we've got her to blame have we for fuck's sake girl why? Oh, yeah. Why? <laughs> oh, yeah, I got it. But uh, that, that's what I would, that's that's what I, uh, yeah, that was that's that's nice. it. That's the one thing I would change. Was not There's always a girl, isn't there? There's always a fucking girl out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm with the I would... girl now who's making me really happy, so I... I, I look back on that stuff as like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I would use that as like my calling card for the rest know, of my life. But I, I know now what it's supposed to be. Yeah. You know? Yes. 
I, I would be like, so if you break up with me, by the way, uh, COVID's going to happen, so you can't break up with me. <laughs> just, just throwing it out there, exactly. just dropping it, because, like, you know, that lady started a pandemic, and I'm really going to blame her for the rest of my life. Thinking, wow, it really all comes down to that one chick. Um, I've, got um, to, I've got to ask you guys in return. Much, yeah. uh, we need a question for our, our next guest. Uh, you don't know who it is, and that's the beauty of this whole thing you don't know who you're going to be asking it to i'm sure if ken knew he was going to ask a young rock band what a question it might have been changed but yeah so yeah um adam do you have any maybe or one of the group a, a question for our next guest let's think right um a question for the next guest huh i mm-hmm. Ooh, it's a proper loaded bit of the show this is isn't it can you guys yeah. just use your brains for a second please one, and one, think of it holler <laughs> wow, come on profound, come man. on <laughs> come really on we can do better than that uh, what's no, the no, 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 velocity really. of an unladen swallow <laughs> 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 i would say five milligrams of mercury <laughs> <laughs> all right these are know. you can be you can be philosoph- philosophical uh, or you can be maybe? cheeky or you can be something new. Have we gone? Are you guys okay? They might be rocking out. Or maybe our question just was like so big. They're like, fuck this shit. We're going to go like do something like. that really matters. <laughs> can you guys hear us? Hello? Yes. Hello, yeah. Hear you now. You, yes, you, you dropped out for a second, but you're back. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, my brain is just being fried by this question. Uh, so, I mean, I mean, generally, I it, it's things like that are one year? like one year goal. Like, what's your goal for the following year? You know what I mean? Oh, One year from excellent. Today, like what's excellent. All right, that's, that's a good question. That's no, good. No, that's a good one. Fuck yes, it is. That's a great that question. Man have a religion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so you guys have been extremely um you guys have been extremely generous of your time and we can't thank you enough for coming on um i have i have one more question before we we end the show and this generally goes to people in your in you get in your position guys um what would you what would your advice be to the next generation of people doing music what what would you say to if a kid came up to you and be like wow i love what you guys do how can i be like you or what should i do what would your uh what don't would you listen to, to fucking neil young Sorry. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, that's it. Everyone, everyone that DMs me, I say the same thing. Yeah. Every guitar kid that DMs me, I'm like, yo, what you do? I always say join a band. Because it's so much better to do it in a team than by yourself. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's impossible by you guys. <laughs> I mean, I always go with the, the classic. It's a little cliche, but I think it's perfect. It's just <laughs> be yourself. You know, like, don't try to be someone else. Uh, you know, just just be yourself and you'll find that there are other people out there that appreciate what you do. Uh, even if you're doing something real weird, there's a, there are people just as weird out there. So, you know, don't give up. Post some some shit online and be yourself. Excellent. I mean, that. I think that's, it's not, it's cliche for a reason, right? It's because it's amazingly good advice. It's not like, you know, yeah. old because it, it's something that isn't effective or it's not something that makes you think it's, it's, it's cliche because it's, it's true. I think it's something that needs to be repeated. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, especially with music. It's like, why, why, why do you want to sound like that guy? You, you got a perfectly unique voice as, as you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right, so so we really have like exhausted you guys a whole bunch. We were so appreciative the fact just, that you came on. Um, no, Alex, did you have something to say? Can I something? can I just say you guys are uh, like genuinely when people of uh, people make it or when they start making it, maybe it changes the way they are. Maybe it changes the way they speak to people or whatever. But you guys are a genuinely amazing example of of young rock artists, young people that are going up there. And you're so positive. You're polite. You're, you're just great guys. And I think you're genuinely, all of you, are great role models for young, um, 
young musicians and, and young stars coming forward. So thank you so much for chatting to us and, and being the guys you oh, are. Thank you very are. much. Thank you. Absolutely. No. Thank you for having us. We'd love to get you back when, when, when things aren't so crazy for you guys and there's, there's probably a bit more yeah. signal. Um, uh, Moose Cooper, our our uh, co-host over there at Thorskin, which is part of our network, Thorskin Podcast, he was like, what the fuck? Why am I not there? Because he's a huge metal fan. <laughs> he's literally going nuts right now, a messenger. What the fuck, Al? Why wasn't I invited? So I'd love to invite you guys back sometime just to like yeah, because genuinely yeah, i think you're great company. you know once, once we release our album we'd love to hear you, what you guys think of it and uh Fuck yes you know hopefully we'll we'll be right over there in the uk very soon let uh, me know i'll be there be i'll be there you guys in person yeah, excellent awesome. well not me i i live like one stay away from you guys he he lives over there <laughs> i'm just an asshole that lives in the woods <laughs> oh, right. oh. Here we go. so so this is your guys' uh, opportunity. <laughs> Not, I mean, don't wrong. You have way more opportunities. But like, uh, give a shout out to where people can find you, where they can follow you, like where your stuff is. Like, this is your this is your time to promote. Yeah. So uh, you may have seen us on TikTok or Instagram, uh, but we have a YouTube channel where we put. Uh, uh, not only our silly little social media videos, but also our original music and some maybe behind the scenes content of our touring and stuff. So definitely check out AMH on YouTube. Uh, we're on pretty much every social media, Facebook. Uh, if you want to order a little personal greeting, we're on Cameo. Uh, you want us to say hi to your grandma or something, you know, we'll do that. Uh, but yeah, so just honestly keep an eye out because uh, all our social media platforms, we post updates on when our new music is coming and just fun videos to get, get you through the day. So we appreciate you guys uh, checking us out. Oh, no oh, problem. I, I, I'm so glad that I came across you guys. Um, really quickly, you guys stick around for a second. We're going to end the show and then we're going to thank you, you know, without the camera on and stuff. Um, so, you know, thank um, guys. This has been Adam and the Metal Hawks. Fucking thank you so much. Thank you very much. We'll catch you guys Woo! next week. Um, make sure you check out our website, Thorskin Podcast, uh, Thorskin. What am I doing? You suck network.com, yes. which is made for our good friends at Web Orchard. <laughs> this is why Tom does the website stuff. I'm doing it quickly so we can get out of here. And also, you can uh, tune sure in Wednesday every week. Thorskin at... Podcast. <laughs> Thor yes. Thorskin Podcast. There it is. Look, there it is. He just did it for us. There it is. Um, we're going to get out of here because I want to chat to these guys away from camera and we've put them through enough shit tonight. So, um, this has been you, Suck. I've been Alex Whiteley. And I'm Tom Bruno. And we will catch you guys next time. Peace. All right, listen up, Spuds. This is Zap Brannigan, eh? Master of Time, Space, and everything else in between. And uh, oh, yeah, winner of this year's Modesty Award. Yeah. You're listening to You Suck with Alan Tom. You're one stop for this sort of thing. Yeah.